WikiHow 7 compilation. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash b dash a dash. Well rounded teenager, why? HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash b dash a dash. Good twelve year old. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash make dash. Your life matter, youth. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash deal dash. With your mom going on dates. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash b dash a dash. Successful teenager. HTTPS colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash b dash. Happy when you are grounded. How to be a well rounded teenager. Download article. Methods. 1. Doing well in school. 2. Spending time with friends. 3. Spending time with family. Plus show 4 more. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. Expert interview. Co-authored by Ashley Pritchard, Ma. Last updated, the 4th of May, 2023 approved. Being a well-rounded teenager is a balancing act. Imagine you're in a circus and riding a unicycle. The ringmaster throws you one ball, and then two, then three and four, which you're expected to juggle all at once, while riding a unicycle. It's tough stuff, which is why so many people look for guidance during their teenage years. If you want to take a Hold of your life again and be the person you want to be, here's some guidance. Method 1. Doing well in school. Download article. 1. Pay attention in class and get good grades. School may seem boring, but it is important to try to do well. Good grades will give you more options in the future. Make sure to jot down any homework or test deadlines when you get them so that you don't forget to complete them and prioritize your study. Deadlines When it is recommended to write notes from your classes. Write notes, as this is one of the best ways for informing your revision before writing essays and sitting exams. If there's something you don't understand, ask somebody. Read it through carefully again, and then if you still don't get it, ask a friend or a teacher. Despite what people might imply, there is never such a thing as a dumb question, it is better to get clarity than to stew in the dark, unenlightened. When you get home from school, do a quick recap on what you learn it that day. This will help you for when you need to revise. It as it cements the day's learning and is much easier than cramming at the last minute. And while it may not seem like it, now, learning as you go creates long-term remembering. Whereas cramming trains only short-term memory and prevents you from truly learning and having access to that information in the future. Two. Do your homework. This sounds like a no-brainer, but doing your homework effectively doesn't just mean sloppily writing something down and handing it in. Do your best on every assignment, and as already stated, ask questions. When you don't understand something, plan a homework schedule so that you don't get yourself into a time crunch. Three. Build good relationships with your teachers. This is especially important in high school because you may need to ask a few of your favorite teachers to write recommendations for your college applications. 
the better they know you, the better those recommendations will be. But more than this, these people can serve as mentors and guides as you move through high school and you can learn much from their knowledge and experience. Method 2. Spending time with friends Download article 1. Take your time to find the right friends. The best friends are friends that you feel comfortable goofing off with and being serious with. You shouldn't have to change your personality to please them. Good friends can be hard to find, so remember that it's not uncommon to change your group of friends several times during your teenage years. Your goal is to find friends who have similar likes and interests. 2. Watch out for peer pressure. Many people experiment with a lot of things in high school and middle school, and it is important to learn how to say no to anything you are not comfortable with. Listen to your instincts and do what's right. Sometimes people pretend to be friends just to get you to do something they are unwilling to do themselves, such as steal things, buy drugs or cheat. None of these things are worth founding a relationship on, and if you're caught, it's you who gets into trouble and you'll find the so-called friendship fails instantly. Method 3. Spending time with family. Download article. 1. Build a relationship with your parents. Although it often seems as though they don't take you seriously, letting your parents know that they can trust you will usually lead to you having more freedom. Recognize that this is a hard time for your parents. Remember that they're not out to make your life miserable, while you feel like you should be treated like an adult, your parents are struggling with the realization that you're not their baby anymore. They are also likely to be struggling with working, paying a mortgage, raising your siblings as well as you and doing their best to be good parents. It's not an easy job, but you can make it easier by being understanding and friendly. 2. Get to know your siblings. Your little sister might seem like the most annoying person in the world now, but you're likely going to spend the rest of your life with her. Plus, being at home will be much more fun when every night is like a sleepover with your best friend. Sponsored by Adobe. 3. Help out around the house. Some chores take less than 5 minutes to Complete when many hands are applied to them, and your parents and siblings will be in a much better mood if there is one less thing for them to do. You can even morph chores into a fun way to spend time with your family by turning them into a contest. Try blasting music that everyone enjoys, or having a nice conversation while you work and setting time limits for completion. If you have winners for properly completed chores, prizes can include things like choosing the DVD or movie to watch as a family or choosing what gets cooked for dinner for that evening. When asked to do a task, do it. This can save many arguments around the house, and when the chores are done you're free to do whatever you want. Arguing can take up a lot of time and creates emotional friction that nobody wants to feel. Method 4. Spending time with yourself. Download article. 1. Schedule some me time. Life can get pretty busy as a teenager, but it's important that you spend time with yourself as well. 2. Figure out your hobbies and interests. Find something you love and make. Sure you do it regularly. 
This will allow you to be refreshed and happy when it comes to other parts of your life. Don't be surprised if your interests change in the space of months or years, that's natural while you're still working out what you enjoy most but don't try too hard. Just follow your interests to see where they lead and remain open-minded about new possibilities too. 3. Stay happy. Depression is a very common condition that tends to show up in your preteen or teenage years. Seek professional help if you think you may be depressed. You may or may not get family support to help you through. Depending on your family circumstances, but don't let a lack of such support stop you from caring for your mental health, there is always someone who can help you sort out depressive or negative feelings and problems and the earlier you are treated, the easier it will be to recover and gain both confidence and resilience for a happier future. Allow yourself to goof off from time to time. Always trying to be serious or focused can make you feel unhappy. Give yourself space to do fun things regularly to balance your studies, activities, and relationships. 4. Listen to music. This can help you relax and relieve some of the stress from a busy day at school or with friends. Music is a good way of expressing yourself. Two, if you don't already know how to play an instrument, consider learning one now, such as the guitar, piano or keyboard. And don't forget that your voice is an instrument too. Five, learn ways to enjoy solitude. Learning to enjoy time spent alone is an important part of realizing that you're whole without another person. This can Help to prevent the development of codependent relationships or to seek to make another person the source of your life's happiness. Solitude also helps you to learn more about what makes you tick as a person and what your life's values are. Some ways to find effective and enjoyable solitude include meditation, walks by yourself, writing in a journal and spending time with pets. Method 5. Taking care of yourself Download article 1. Take care of yourself Wash your face, take regular showers, eat home-cooked meals instead of ready-made ones, etc. Always make sure to brush your teeth two to three times a day. This will keep them clean and your breath smelling good. 2. Exercise. You don't have to go crazy, but a little bit of physical activity each day, such as biking to school, will help keep both your body and mind healthy. 3. Eat well. Eating too much or too little will make it hard to focus and cause you to do poorly in other areas. 4. Get enough sleep. Having about 9 hours sleep is the best thing to be doing. Even on weekends, it will prepare you for school and make yourself feel better. The following morning. Try to schedule each week so that you get your homework done at a reasonable hour. If you know you're going to have a lot on a given night, talk to your teacher about getting an extension, or even better, handing it in early. This will make your body more aware of what's going on. And will make any dreadful bags under your eyes disappear. 5. Wake up on time. Make sure you have enough time to have some breakfast. Wash your face, have a shower if you need to, etc. before school starts. Packing your bag and hanging up your outfit forward slash uniform the night before will make everything a lot faster and more organized. Don't forget to lay out a clean pair of socks, underwear and a pair of shoes also. Method 6.
joining an extracurricular activity. Download article. 1. Join Boy Scouts forward slash Girl Scouts forward slash 4H or similar programs and stick with it. These programs will give you a sense of community and teach you life skills. They also open up a range of opportunities that might not be offered at school. Or through your social networks, such as public speaking, drama, life or outdoor skills, etc. 2. Join a club. School clubs are a great way to get involved without sacrificing things you're passionate about. They can also help you work out what sorts of hobbies and interests you enjoy most. Try a few over your teen years and don't be afraid to admit when one doesn't work for you and to keep looking. 3. Try for a sports team. This will teach you how to work in a team, and you will become good friends with your team members. Alternatively, if team sports don't do it for you, at least find a sport that interests you be it athletics, triathlons, swimming, tennis, cycling or other more individual but still excellent sports. Even individual sports have team elements when you play on behalf of your school or region. Martial arts can be another excellent outlet for physical and Mental development. They are also a good way of developing self discipline. While it's a good idea to begin in one martial sport, it is possible to do more than one once you're proficient in your first martial art. 4. Consider volunteering. Another extracurricular activity that benefits both you and others is volunteering. Choose something you're passionate about and set regular times to help out. It might be something that fits in with a sport or activity you love to, so it doesn't have to be about overstretching yourself. Method 7. Finding a job. Download article. While getting a job is a wonderful way to spend your extra time, don't feel like it's necessary. The things discussed above come first, relationships, studies, and extracurricular activities. A job is not worth sacrificing any of those aspects of your teen years, and it is very hard to juggle a lot of different responsibilities with a job. On the other hand, if you feel you can manage to fit in a part-time job with your other activities, Getting a job will help show your parents that you are responsible, and can give you money to save or buy things that your parents can't spare the money for. Some common teenage jobs include babysitting. If you have little siblings, you can babysit them. If not, set signs over houses where anybody under 12 lives. You can usually make pretty good money babysitting, and this is a good weekend job that still lets you study or call friends on the phone once the children have gone to bed. Pet sitting. If you don't feel comfortable being responsible for another person, a pet might be a way to start. Talk to your neighbors and family friends with pets, and let them know that. You'd be happy to watch the pets when they go on vacation. The beauty of this job is that it will usually be periodic rather than every day. If you live in the country, don't forget that farmer. Neighbors might jump at the opportunity of the chance to take a little time off for a break knowing you're caring for their farm and animals. Tutoring if there's a subject that you excel at, you can make money teaching it to others. Post signs around town with your contact information, talk to your friends and their younger siblings or ask your old teacher, S, 
if s forward slash he can recommend you to. Parents of struggling children. Being a camp counselor. Contact the YMCA or the director of your favorite childhood summer camp and ask when they hire camp counselor and if you can apply. Usually, people start hiring for the next summer from around January to March or April. Depending on the size of the camp. If you can legally get a work permit, apply for jobs at a local business. Look into being a restaurant host forward slash hostess, working in retail, or helping to coach a sport. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Always try to be a positive teenager. Make sure that everything is ready the night before, and that you have plenty of time and don't miss out on breakfast in the morning. Avoid conflicts with friends. If you feel you're getting negative attention from one person, try to stay away from them for a while and let them cool off. Show more tips. If you have difficulty with schoolwork, speak to the relevant teachers and ask for help. If you experience negative feelings, or you're subjected to abuse, emotional, physical or verbal, Seek help from someone like a teacher, parent, friend, counselor or another neutral party. If there are problems at home, seek help from a counselor or someone else you trust outside of the home. Don't suffer in silence, nobody deserves to be at the center of constant harm. How to be a good 12-year-old. Download article. Methods. 1. Keeping a good relationship with your parents. 2. Succeeding in school. 3. Dressing appropriately. Plus show one more. Other sections. Related articles. Author info. Last updated, the 31st of March, 2023. As a tween, you probably want to please others around you and be the best you can be. And this article can probably help you. Method 1. Keeping a good relationship with your parents. Download article 1. Follow household rules. Go to bed when you are told, and do chores if you are required to do so. If you are unhappy with a particular rule, speak with your parents and other household members about changing it. 2. Be polite and respectful to your parents, siblings and other household members. Treat others as you would like to be treated. Say please and thank you, and have good table manners. 3. Give your parents cards and presents on their birthdays, Christmas, Mother's Forward slash Father's Day, etc. Make an effort to get them something nice that they will like. 4. Assure them that you love them. They love you, and it will make them happy to know you love them. 5. Spend quality time with family. Although you are almost a teenager, it is important to spend time with family. Method 2. Succeeding in school. Download article. 1. Do homework to the best of your ability and hand it in on time. This will help you in learning new and important things. 2. Revise before assessments, especially in subject you are not so good at. In order to get good grades, you will have to pass exams, and it can really help to. Revise a few days before the test. Ask family members and friends to quiz you. On things. 3. Take notes in class and ask questions if you are stuck. Contributing to the. Class is also great, as you can teach others new things. 4. Wear the correct uniform. 
If your school doesn't have one, wear suitable clothes, such as jeans, t-shirt and sneakers. When you wear makeup make sure you aren't wearing it to fix yourself instead try to wear it for fun. You're perfect without makeup but experimenting with it can be really fun. 5. Follow the school rules. They are there for a reason. Method. 3. Dressing appropriately. Download article. 1. Have a variety of clothes. For everyone, a good selection would be casual dresses, formal dresses, jackets, leggings, t-shirts, tights, jeans, flats, heels, boots, and trainers. 2. Choose footwear wisely. Smart shoes should be kept for school and special occasions, and for daily activities casual shoes should be worn. 3. Dress according to the weather. In winter you will need a coat, and in summer you will probably want to wear light, loose clothing. Method. 4. Behaving age appropriately. Download article. 1. Travel to school with friends, if possible. This age is when you could start. Traveling to school is a good start. 2. Have friends and spend time with them, but not too much because you still need to have family time. 3. Learn to cook. Even though your parents will still cook meals for you, it's a good skill to learn how to make your life matter. Youth. Download article. Parts. 1. Figuring out who you are. 2. Connecting with the world. 3. Making lifestyle changes. Plus show one more. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Rachel Clissold. Last updated, the 9th of July, 2024 References. Most people want to live a life that feels meaningful. It can be difficult to cultivate a meaningful life, especially if you're young. Try to explore yourself and your passions. Figure out what matters to you and then work to pursue it. Part 1. Figuring out who you are. Download article. 1. Define your life story. If you want to have a meaningful life, the first step is to understand your own life story. How you interpret the events of your life impacts how you see yourself and the world around you. Try to reflect on your life and develop a positive and meaningful life story. Review the events of your life. When have you felt strongest and happiest? What hardships have you faced? It can help to jot down a brief narrative of your life, starting at your earlier memories and moving into the present moment. 1. Try to find meaning in the various stories of your life. There's a lot of power in being able to construct your own sense of meaning and purpose. For example, think of a challenge you faced. Maybe you've always struggled with math. Despite studying very hard, your grades have always been lackluster. You can read this as evidence that you work hard but still aren't rewarded. However, try to find a more positive, inspiring meaning here. This shows you are the type of person who works hard because you feel it's important to work hard. You do not expect external rewards for your efforts and continue to persevere even in the face of setbacks. Your struggles with this particular subject in school can easily speak to your strong character. 2. 2. 
explore your sense of purpose. If you want to make your life matter, you need a sense of purpose. What drives you as a person? What difference do you want to make in the world? It can take a long time to develop a clear sense of purpose. Youth is a great time to explore and question your own purpose. While you may not come to an answer until you're an adult, take some time to consider the possible purposes for your life. Consider yourself and your principles. How do you define right and wrong? How do you want to make an impact on the world? Some people want to help others directly, through service, while others want to inspire those around them through works of art or writing. How can you see yourself serving a greater purpose or meaning? Why? 3. Your life is probably very busy. Between school, a social life, and other activities you are likely occupied with tasks throughout the day. Try to pause during your day, however, for a few moments to question why you're doing what you're doing. This can help you cultivate a sense of purpose. For example, why are you taking time after school for horseback riding lessons? What about the practice is meaningful to you? Do you care about animals? Can you see yourself finding purpose in working towards improving animal welfare? Any small, seemingly meaningless activity you engage in can help you foster a sense of purpose. 4. 3. Explore your passions. Your youth is a great time to explore your interests and passions. Spend some time figuring out what inspires you, what pushes you to be a better person. This can help you live a meaningful life. Work on exploring your interests. Join a club in school that you think you might like. Engage in an extracurricular activity, like Joining a sports team, and see if you enjoy it. Read about subjects that interest you. If you're interested in animal welfare, for example, read books and articles exploring the subject. If you're interested in art, check out a book from your library about art and art history. Focus on things that you not only enjoy but feel inspired by. When engaging in your passions, you should feel good about yourself. When you find something that you're really passionate about, do your best to keep that spark alive. Don't allow the outside world to take away your enthusiasm and your excitement. 5. The Great British Insulation Scheme is a government initiative that's all about insulating your home. It's designed to work alongside another government. Energy Efficiency Scheme, ECHO 4. We can help you check if you're eligible for upgrades you could get them for free or at a reduced cost. Sponsored by OVO Energy. 4. Identify your personal values. If you're trying to find meaning, it's important to identify a set of values for yourself. Keep in mind these values may change with time or experience. Do not think of them as unchanging rules but rather loose guidelines you can explore throughout the course of your life. There are a variety of questions you can ask yourself to help you figure out your values. Write down a list of people you admire. These can be people you know personally or public figures. What do you admire about these people? Why? If your house was on fire, what three objects would you bring? The objects you value show a lot about what value as a person 
What issues do you get most excited talking about? What would you change about your community? What was the most fulfilling moment of your life? Why? Look over your answers when you're done. Are there any common themes you notice? Look for common beliefs and principles in your answers. You can use these to get a sense of your personal values. Part 2. Connecting with the world. Download article. 1. Foster close relationships with friends and family members. Having Positive relationships with others is important to living a meaningful life. Try to build positive, meaningful relationships with people who support you and build you up, like your friends and family. 6. Prioritize connecting with others. Make time with your friends. On weekends, try to email and text your friends throughout the day. Work on building close relationships. You learn a lot about yourself through how you engage with people around you. 7. Take time each week to connect with friends and family. Members. Ask your parents about having a weekly family game. Night. Make a point of getting together with your friends for a movie on Saturday nights. Feeling close to people is a matter of spending time together frequently. 8. Talk to your friends and family members. Share stories. Talk about your week and how you're feeling. Ask others how they are feeling and genuinely listen to the answers. Share tastes in music, books, and television. You can learn a lot about yourself and your values through talking to others. 9. Teamwork can help with getting close to your family. Engaging in activities that require you and your family to work together can foster positive feelings. Cook dinner with your siblings. Clean the garage or do other yard work together as a family. Working together can help you and your family grow close. 10. Switch your home energy to OVO and join the Power Move Challenge to use your energy at greener times of the day. You'll get money off your energy bills and help take pressure off the grid. Smart meter required. Sponsored by OVO. 2. Make new friends. In addition to getting close to existing contacts, try to meet new people. You can learn a lot by having a diverse range of friends and contacts. Reach out and meet new people. Go to events where you're likely to meet others. Go to a concern, poetry reading, art show, or other event that feels interesting to you. Go alone as this will give you an opportunity to meet others. 11. You can also find new people by doing things like volunteering, taking on a part-time job, or joining a club or organization. 12. Connecting to people means showing interest in them. When trying to meet new people, ask questions. Ask people where they're from, what they're interested in, and other ice-breaking topics. Having genuine interest is a great way to make new friends. 13. Pay attention when others talk. Take in what's being expressed to you. Little things, like remembering someone's taste in music, will be impressive later on. You can also learn a lot about yourself and discover meaning and values by listening to others. 14. 3. Generate confidence. Self-expression is a great way to connect with the world. 
your life will feel more meaningful if you make an effort to express yourself and your emotions. Work on building your confidence. This can help you express yourself easier. Voice what you feel using I statements. This shows that you're asserting your own opinion and beliefs rather than objective truths. You will be able to voice how you feel to others in a direct, honest manner. For example, say something like, I feel that giving back to your community is important or I feel happy when I'm helping others. 15. Fear of rejection often hampers self-expression. Avoid fear by learning not to personalize rejection or setbacks. If your friend did not want to go to the beach with you on Saturday do not jump to the conclusion she dislikes you. Instead, consider the possibility your friend is busy with work or school. Also, in any given situations provide yourself with multiple options. If plan A falls through, there's always plan B. For example, invite a handful of friends to the beach on Saturday. If one backs out, you will have others to rely on that day. 16. Be authentic. Express how you feel and pursue things that interest you. Try painting, writing, drawing, dancing, or other creative outlets to channel your inner emotions and convey them to others. 17. 4. Try new things. Part of finding the meaning in life is rooted in being brave. Trying new things, and being open to new experiences, is what helps us discover meaning. Be willing to try anything once. Taste foods you've never had before. Go see a band that your friend likes, even if that musical genre isn't your style. Try new physical endeavors. Go snowboarding, surfing, skiing, or anything else new and exciting. Taking risks and exploring your tastes and boundaries will help you find a more meaningful life. 18. Seek out what you want. If you're interested in someone, romantically, ask them out. If you want to learn a new language, ask your parents for permission to take a class trip abroad. Do not let fear dominate you. Try new things, even if they're scary. You will not regret it in the long run. 19. Part 3. Making Lifestyle Changes Download Article 1. Set Goals If you want to make your life matter, you need to focus on meaningful accomplishments. Set goals for yourself, based on your passions and wants, and work towards these goals. Set specific goals that push you towards meaningful pursuits. For example, don't set a goal like, I'm going to protect the environment. Focus on the specifics on how you might do this. For example, I'm going to use my bike more and recycle cans and bottles. 20. Write down your goals to help yourself stay on task. 21. Repeat your goals to yourself when you get discouraged. Read. Your lists of personal goals each morning if you're having an off week. This can help you remind yourself why your goals are important and push you to work harder. 22. 2. Live with compassion. Compassion is key to leading a meaningful life. If you want to influence those around you in a meaningful way, try to develop a sense of empathy for others. Pay attention to the body language of those around you. This can give you insight into their emotions. 
watch people's facial expression and how they carry themselves. Someone who's slumped over and frowning, for example, might be angry or sad. 23. Listen to people when they talk. It can be helpful to repeat what a person says in your own words when he or she finishes talking. This can assure that you're completely understanding these person's emotions. Ask people how they feel or how they're doing and make an effort to genuinely listen to their answer. 24. Remember to be compassionate toward yourself, as well. Love. And accept yourself for who you are. Also, while you should. Accept ownership for any mistakes you've made, don't judge. Yourself harshly or beat yourself up for them. 25. Be kind throughout the day. If you hear someone gossiping. About another person, do not engage. Imagine how you would. Feel if you were on the receiving end of gossip. This can help you. Avoid the temptation to join in. 26. 3. Be aware of your own emotions. In addition to being aware of others. Emotions, try to be aware of your own. Be aware of how you're feeling and how. You can regulate those feelings in a positive manner. Emotions can vary in intensity. You may feel a little sad, for example, if you see a dead bird on the sidewalk. You may feel very sad if you get a bad grade on a test you worked hard on. Emotions, however, are temporary. They come and go with time and circumstance. 27. No emotions are inherently bad. However, how you express them matters. For example, you shouldn't yell at your mother if you did poorly on an exam. It can be helpful to talk about your emotions with those you're close to. This way, you get negative feelings out of your head and this can help you not lash out when you're upset. 28. Regulating your emotions is important to living a meaningful life. If you want to do good in the world, you have to take care of yourself as well as others. Work on fostering an awareness of your own emotions and expressing them in appropriate ways. Part 4. Giving back. Download article. 1. Volunteer. Volunteering can be a great way to feel your life has meaning. Try giving back to your community through service to organizations that are important to you. Helping others is related to life satisfaction. Those that help others on a regular basis tend to feel happier and more fulfilled. 29. Ask your parents about how you can get involved in your community. If you're under 18, you may need parental permission when volunteering. If your parents volunteer anywhere, you may be able to offer your assistance. For example, if your parents work for a local political party, you could join them on days they're working on do small tasks around the office. 2. Pay attention to the needs of those around you. Giving back does not just mean donating your time to charity. You should also work to be kind to those around you. This can help you feel your life matters as you'll have a positive impact on friends and family members. Ask people about their needs. If your friend is sad because his pet cat just died, ask what you can do to help. Sometimes, something as simple as listening goes a long way. 30. Be interested in others. Do not be nosy or insincere, but show 
genuine interest in the passions of those around you. Ask your friends about their hobbies and interests. 31. 3. Cultivate gratitude. Your life will feel more meaningful if you make an effort to feel grateful for what you have. Try to be thankful for what you have in life. Practice rituals that allow you express gratitude. You can say thanks before a meal, for example, or think about what you're thankful for each night before bed. 32. 4. Explore your spirituality. Youth can be a great time to explore religion and spirituality. While you may have taken on your parents' moral and faith during adolescence, use your youth as an opportunity to explore faith on your own. Learn about various religious and spiritual traditions. You could read up on a variety of faiths at your local library. Read the religious texts and doctrines of religions and spiritual belief systems across the world. See if anything stands out to you as particularly meaningful or moving. Talk to local religious leaders. Attend religious ceremonies from a variety of religious denominations. See what you connect with personally. Keep in mind not everyone feels a personal need for religion. You may explore various religious faiths only to find religion is not necessary to make your life meaningful. This is fine as well. The goal here is to find something that you connect with given your personal values. File colon triple forward slash home forward slash chronos forward slash u dash. B20749C56107F16C32DDDBB6A043D1E331E1 forward slash my files forward slash downloads forward slash budget your money step 18.jpg Expert Q&A Question How can I make my life feel meaningful? Rachel Clissold Certified Life Coach Expert Answer Try to write down three things each day you're grateful for. These can be broad things, like nature, or specific things, like a good friend of yours. Not helpful 0 helpful 6 Question How can I make my life meaningful if I'm a kid? Rachel Clissold Certified Life Coach Expert Answer Keep the spark of your imagination alive. Don't allow the outside world to take away your passion, enthusiasm, and excitement for play. Not helpful to helpful 5. Question What if I set a goal, but the next day I'm too lazy or you don't have time? Community Answer don't be hard on yourself, this happens, and your timeline is yours to control. Either split your goal into smaller steps that are easier to accomplish, or simply reschedule. How to deal with your mom going on dates. Download article. Parts. 1. Working out your emotions about your mom dating. 2. Talking to your mom about your feelings. 3. Maintaining your relationship with your mom. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Chandler Chang, Ph.D. Last updated, the 9th of June, 2022. When your mom starts dating someone new, it can seem weird and gross. The fact of. The matter is though, that your mom is a human being and desires love and affection. Just like most other people do. In order to deal with your mom going out on dates, you'll first need to deal with your own emotions by reflecting on how your mom dating makes you feel. 
Talk to your mom to avoid misunderstandings, and take steps to maintain your relationship. Part 1. Working out your emotions about your mom dating. Download article. 1. Accept your parents' separation. Perhaps your parents got divorced, were never married and decided to go their separate ways, or maybe your other parent has passed away. There are many reasons parents aren't able to continue on together, and as their child, it can be hard to accept this reality. Sometimes, when your mom starts dating, it serves as a cold reminder that your parents aren't and will never be together again. 1. Try to understand that it isn't up to you whether your parents will be together or not. If your parents are no longer together, then that is how it will be, and you can only try to make the best of the situation. 2. Reflect on how you're feeling. You may be feeling a lot of different emotions about your mom's decision to start dating. You may feel betrayed, or angry, sad, scared, or even happy for her. Try to identify all the different feelings that are going on. Try to identify what it is about her dating that is causing each emotion. Thinking deeply about your feelings can help you untangle them. When you talk to your mom about what's bothering you, you will be able to express yourself more clearly. 2. Sometimes it can be helpful to write down all the different emotions you are feeling to keep it all straight. For example, if you write down that you are feeling betrayed, follow that thought. What is it about your mom dating that makes you feel betrayed? Do you feel betrayed because you think she is trying to replace your dad and create a new family? 3. Think about different outcomes. What do you think will happen now that your mom has started dating? Try to imagine and work through different scenarios. Maybe she will meet someone and get married, or maybe she will meet someone and get her heart broken. What role do you play in each of those scenarios? Thinking through different scenarios can be a good way to feel like you have some control over the situation. Ultimately, you really don't, but it can be helpful to feel like you know what role you will play in several different scenarios. 4. Talk to someone you trust. Dealing with this new situation can be really tough especially if you feel that you can't talk to your mom about what's going on. Instead, talk to a friend or trusted family member about the situation. Tell them why it's bothering you. They may be able to point out things you hadn't thought of, or offer guidance. It may be very helpful in this situation to get help from a professional counselor who can help you understand what you're feeling. Avoid talking to your other parent about your mom's dating. Even if they already know about it, it's unlikely that they'll be able to approach the subject without putting their own emotions into it. 5. Recognize that you are not responsible for your mom's decisions. When your mom is dating, she may make choices that you believe to be poor ones. She may go on dates with lots of different people, she may stay out very late, or she may date people that are obviously wrong for her. However, it is important to recognize and remember that she is an adult who is able to make decisions for herself. She may not always make the best decisions but they are her mistakes to make, not yours. If your mom has not dated for many, many years try to keep in 
mind that it is probably a very scary and challenging time for her. Dating can be hard and emotionally draining. Try to remember this and be understanding of the situation. Although it may not feel like it sometimes, you are the child in this relationship. It is not your responsibility to keep your mom from making poor decisions or mistakes. Part 2. Talking to your mom about your feelings. Download article. 1. Talk with your mom about how you feel. It's important when you do this not to accuse your mom of neglecting you or not caring about you. Instead, focus on talking to her about how you feel. Are you feeling scared that you'll lose her to someone? Maybe you're worried she will get hurt. Are you worried she is trying to replace your dad? Pinpoint exactly what you're feeling. 3. Try to do this at a time when you are not fighting with your mom or angry about something. Otherwise, you risk saying things you don't mean, which may really hurt her feelings. 2. Address your concerns. When you are talking with your mom, this will be the time to address any concerns you have about her decisions related to dating or about the person she is dating. Do this respectfully. It may be helpful to say something like, I know it is not my place to tell you what to do, but I have noticed that, hopefully, this will help her see that you are only trying to look out for her, even though it isn't your job. For example, if you notice that she often comes home sad after her dates, point this out to her. Say something like, Mom, I'm trying my best to be understanding of this new chapter in your life, but every time you come home from a date, you seem less happy than when you left. I just want to make sure that you are doing what makes you happy. Point out any changes you might like to see related to your relationship with her. For example, if you feel like she isn't spending enough time with you then say, I understand that. Going on dates means you won't be home as often and that's okay. But I also want to spend time with you. Can we schedule some time where it's just you and me doing something fun? Once you have talked about your concerns related to her dating, leave it be. It is okay to do this once to get it out in the open. After that, you should respect that your mom is an adult. 3. Listen to what she has to say. It is just as important to give your mom a chance to express her own feelings. Try to hear what is going on in your mom's life, and why she wanted to start dating. You may find, for example, that your mom has felt very lonely for a long time, and that dating has made her feel happy and cared for. If you are able to listen, your mom will see that you aren't just trying to make everything difficult. Listening to your mom's feelings will also help make her feel like you care which will hopefully bring you closer together. 4. Write her a letter. If you feel as though talking to your mom will only end in a fight, or that she won't listen to you, try writing down all of your feelings in a letter. As you would when talking to her, try to be respectful, and avoid accusing her of one thing or another. Just explain how you are e feeling. The advantage here is that it will give her plenty of time to read and reread your thoughts, and will give her a chance to think about the best way to react to your feelings. 4. Part 3. Maintaining your relationship with your mom. Download article. 1. Ask to spend time with her. 
if you feel like your mom is spending too much time with her new love interest, try asking her if you can spend some time alone together. She may simply not realize that you want to spend time with her too, she may have thought you'd like to have your alone time. Ask if you guys can go see a movie together, or make dinner together. If she tells you that it is a great idea, and that she will invite the new boyfriend along, explain to her that you'd really like to spend some time with just her. If she asks why you want to spend time together in the first place, just tell her that it's because you love her, and you want to stay close with her. 2. Avoid comparing your mom's new love interest to your other parent. It can be easy to notice how her new partner is not as good as your other parent. Keep in mind, though, that they're not there to replace your other parent, so it doesn't matter if they're the same or different. Instead, try to notice the things that you really like about your mom's new partner. Maybe they like going outside and playing catch with you, or maybe they treat your mom really well, and it's apparent how happy they make your mom. It's always a good plan to look for the qualities in other people, rather than their flaws. 3. Be supportive. This is a tough one, but if you are constantly fighting with your mom about her dating, and telling her she shouldn't do it, then there will be a lot of tension in your relationship. If you can, try to remind her that you love her very much, and that you want her to be happy, but that you also want to have your own time with her too. If you like someone that she is dating, tell her. If you don't like them, then just try to be polite. You don't have to be best friends. 4. Be open to the person she is dating. Remember that this person isn't there to replace your dad. They are there because they care about your mom too. You don't have to treat this person as you would your parent, but treat them as you would any other adult that you have no reason to disrespect. Greet them when you see them and remember to say please and thank you when necessary. 5. If you give them a chance, you might find that you like them more than you thought you would. This can be scary, and you might feel angry or resentful when you meet this person. If you need to, go to your room for a while. To reflect on your encounter with the new person, but try not to be rude. 5. Avoid talking badly about the person your mom is dating to your other parent. This can be tempting, but try not to do it. It isn't fair to your mom or the person she is dating, and it may even be painful for your other parent to hear about it. It may create even more tension between your parents as your dad may question your mom's ability to make her own decisions. If you feel like you need to vent bad feelings about the person your mom is dating, try writing all of it down in a journal or talking to someone, such as a friend, who is not involved in the situation. Expert Q&A Ask a question Submit Tips Keep the lines of communication open. When you're feeling angry or hurt, it can be really easy to shut your mom out. To keep your relationship strong, keep talking. Open up to the person your mom is dating. If she seems to be getting serious with someone, try talking to them about your feelings. You may find that they completely understand what you're going through. How to be a successful teenager. Download article. Methods. 1. Being more active. 2. Planning for the future. 
3. Managing money. Plus show one more. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Andrew Lokenorth. Last updated, the 7th of March, 2024 references. The age range of 13 to 19 is an important time in an individual's life. Huge steps are taken within that portion. While you are a teenager, many exciting opportunities for success are given to you. Taking on the right amount of responsibility and independence can push you towards becoming a successful teenager. Method 1. Being more active. Download article. 1. Participate in extracurricular activities. Schools give students opportunities for staying active. How you use your time should be up to you. Pick an activity that appeals to you such as athletics, academic clubs, or special interest clubs. Select one that plays to your interests. Extracurricular activities build character. Through teamwork, time management, and competition. Don't be too worried if you aren't very good at what you like. The important thing is passion, which will drive you to put in your best effort. 2. Volunteer. Giving your time to your community is a noble activity with several benefits. Volunteering can teach you job related skills such as responsibility or Time management. Some schools also reward the learning aspect of volunteer. Work with credit hours. If you are interested in college, volunteering makes you much more appealing during the application process. 1. 3. Use your summer for academic programs and camps. Getting a head start at college could mean sacrificing or shortening, your summer vacation. Various universities offer programs for future college students based on interests such as journalism, photography, art, sports, etc. These programs give teenagers the chance to earn college credit, experience dorm life, and see a university's town. 2. Research different programs. Get all of the details, then figure out which one is the best choice for you. Check the requirements and deadlines. Avoid getting into trouble because of a simple mistake, and you will have a great time. 4. Shadow a professional for a field you wish to pursue. Building a resume. Getting experience and earning letters of recommendation can start at a very young age. A lot of teenagers have a desired career path. Luckily, some professionals allow teenagers to visit offices for some hands-on experience. 3. The non-paid experience can build character and open up future opportunities. Make phone calls and office visits to find a company willing to allow you to shadow. Ask family if they know someone whom you can shadow. Method 2. Planning for the future. Download article. 1. Set goals. One aspect of becoming successful is to look forward in life. Making and meeting goals motivates you to progress. An important aspect about setting goals is getting organized and assessing your interests. Speak with a parent or a mentor, like a school counselor, for assistance, guidance is very helpful. Ask yourself important questions such as what do I enjoy doing? What do I want to be good at? Or where do I see myself 5 to 10 years from now? Do some research to see what it takes to reach that goal. 
learn how to break it down into mini goals that are reached as you progress. 4. 2. Understand and build your credit score. Your credit score is the measurement of how trustworthy you are to agencies that determine loans you receive, allow you to live in their apartment complex, or decide your interest rate. Even though getting a credit card at a young age can be on the hands of a parent, it is up to the teenager to use it correctly and understand that it's not just money on a card, it is a promise between the teenager and a third party. 5. Know that credit is a revolving pattern, use a credit card for something you wish to purchase and pay off in a self-managed time frame. Using a credit card takes responsibility and discipline, these characteristics also build other good habits. 6. 3. Continue your education. The average teenager goes through two major educational milestones, graduating from high school and graduating from college. Teenagers go through different phases, and education is often put aside. However, in order to be successful, education should be viewed as an investment for the future and a tool to show teenagers how to be inquisitive. 7. Moreover, a better education can lead to more work opportunities, so be sure to pursue what fits your goals and interests. 4. Build strong relationships. Teenagers go through a lot of change, and these changes can transform relationships quickly and abruptly. Being a successful teenager means knowing how to pursue a good relationship, one where there is the chance for both fun and future. Evaluate your current relationship. Make sure your maturity level and interests are leveled. Be there for each other. Which will mean learning how to make compromises and being selective of battles. 8. Method 3. Managing money Download article 1. Get a job Having your own job builds positive character and will help you mature. Even if parents give you money, earning your own paycheck puts you on a path to success by giving you the opportunity to learn time management, job responsibility, leadership skills, teamwork, and life skills in the real world. Also, earning your own paycheck puts money in your pockets, and what you do with your earnings is up to you. 2. Track your expenses. Allowances, gifts, and paychecks will be your sources of income as a teenager. Learning to manage money starts with tracking how you spend that income. Create a money diary where you write down all of your spending for a given time period, either weekly, monthly, or yearly. Then, evaluate what you spend by deciding what is needed, such as gas, car, insurance, phone bill, and what is entertainment, such as movie tickets, personal items, going out. Creating this diary will help you visualize where your money goes and can set you on the track to create a budget and savings. 3. Save money. Once you earn money, it is very tempting to use it immediately. And as a teenager, it is easy to neglect saving money. In order to be more successful, learn that money can be saved for more important spending opportunities. To help you save, open up a bank account. Banks can give many opportunities to teenagers. Get advice and research first before opening any accounts. Once you have one, figure out a monthly budget that will help you put aside money. When you start off, more than likely a co-signer or parent will 
have access to your account activity. Use this as a learning opportunity and ask for them to keep you in check of what you spend. 4. Control Impulse Buying Buying is almost always easier than saving. Small Purchases can take a toll on your savings, and more often than not, those purchases could have been avoided. These impulse purchases are difficult for both teenagers and adults, so controlling these impulses at a young age helps ensure better money management throughout your life. Put yourself to the test and wait to buy items. Oftentimes, giving yourself a week will show you that you didn't really need the item, or the item would have been put on sale. Make sure that you understand what you're spending your money on. If you're looking to budget and reduce expenses, you might have to take a closer look at what you're buying. For instance, if spending money on dating forward slash going out is a priority for you, you might have to cut back in other areas. 9. Method 4. Taking on more responsibility Download article 1. Become more independent Independence is very important to a teenager. It comes as a necessity over time, but when teenagers start off being independent, it usually comes as a privilege from your parents. Figure out your home dynamics, and offer areas where your independence becomes helpful to your household, for example, cooking your meals, cleaning up after yourself, taking care of younger siblings, asking for less supervision, getting a part-time job, etc. As you gain more responsibility and independence, be aware that failure might occur and is to be expected. Learning from failure, however, will help you to grow. 10. 2. Learn how to use several forms of transportation. Getting from place to place does not always mean driving, but as a teenager, driving is a huge step in responsibility and independence. Be sure to take any courses and means to Obtain a driver's license. Also, driving is not the only way to get around. Cities have public transportation that can be both cheap and accessible for teenagers. Learn the routes needed to get you from place to place. It will teach you time, management and patience. 3. Travel more often. As you grow up, your city gets smaller and the world gets bigger. Family vacations help you explore certain regions, but taking on world travel also helps build responsibility and independence. A younger person has more outlets to travel by such as study abroad, language exchange, or volunteer programs. If you have family in distant places, reconnect with a summer visit. The chance to travel gives experiences that build great character. 11. 4. Know when to ask for help and advice. Being responsible and independent does not mean being alone. Taking on new tasks and meeting goals will be hard. Work. Asking people for help shows maturity and confidence. Seek advice from Parents, older siblings, mentors at work, teachers, or someone whom you trust. Opening up channels of communication at a young age is a great habit for success. 12. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Communicate with your parents forward slash guardians often. Their experiences can become advice for you and your future ideas. Stay focused on your goals. B. 
be accountable for your actions and spending. Don't blame friends or others for your mishaps, learn from them, and move forward. How to be happy when you are grounded. Download article. Parts. 1. Finding indoor activities. 2. Finding outdoor activities. 3. Dealing with your parents. Other sections. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Jura Anderson, PSYD. Last updated, the 30th of April, 2024 References. It's hard to feel happy when you're grounded. Your beloved electronics may be in the hands of your parents, your friends may not be allowed to visit, or you may even be stuck in your room. Suddenly, you feel upset, unable to do what you want, and you need to fill time. Instead of moping, a little creativity can help you begin to enjoy this time and make you feel happier. Part 1. Finding Indoor Activities Download Article 1. Play Games Whatever game you find will give you a simple option for passing the time. All you need is a deck of cards, a board game, or your imagination. Use this time to learn a new game or reconnect with an old one. Whether this be learning one of the endless newer board game options such as Cards Against Humanity or playing an old classic, such as Monopoly, grabbing your family or friends for a session, can entertain and ease tension between you. If you have a sibling, take the time to play with them. Even Something as simple as hide-and-seek or tag is a change of pace. Card games are an old standard for passing time, but there are many variations on games such as solitaire that you can learn. 1. The particularly ambitious can even try inventing their own game. You'll keep your mind active, but who knows? You may come up with a new tradition. Video games, if they haven't been confiscated, are another simple option with the potential for large time investment and enjoyment. 2. Clean your room. No, it doesn't sound fun, but it is a useful way to spend the time. Maybe your room is messy and you can't walk without stepping on dirty shirts or your favorite bracelet vanished from the jewelry box. Managing your space is an efficient use of your time and will impress your parents. The act of cleaning gets you active, and when your room smells nice and is organized you'll feel happier. 2. You can put on music, a podcast, or an audio book to further distract your mind from you grounding and your chores. You can also do other chores around the house and use them to ask for extra allowance or less time being grounded. 3. Catch up on homework. As with cleaning, it isn't a fun way to pass the time. But it's a useful way to do so. Being stuck in your house or your room gives you a perfect time with reduced distractions to get done the work you're going to have to do anyway to prepare for class. Getting the work done now means that later on you'll have more time to do what you want, rather than having to stop and finish homework at the last minute. Preparation means better grades and better grades means impressing parents, making them more lenient, and reducing grade-related opportunities to be grounded. Four. Read or listen to books. Because of being busy with schoolwork, friends, and social media, many people miss out on the adventures the literary world used to offer them. Have you been eyeing that new book your friends have been discussing? Now is the perfect time to begin it, or even go back into the reads. 
that once inspired you. For those that don't have books or dislike the physical act of reading, audio books are now widely available at libraries, bookstores, or online shops such as audible.com. Audio books are combinable with mindless activities such as chores. Even if the book doesn't take you somewhere else by imagination, hearing the speaker can keep you daydreaming. Which passes the time. 3. 5. Listen to podcasts to learn something new. Podcasting is another electronic platform that has exploded due to the internet. Virtually anyone can learn to make one, so there's plenty of variety out there, from storytelling to music to learning a new language. What you want to get out of this time is entirely up to you. If electronics have been banned for you, ask your parents to help. You find some podcasts relating to your interests or download them to a device such as an iPod ahead of time. Search a platform such as iTunes. The program store keeps a healthy supply of podcasts, and most of them are free. 6. Draw or paint. You don't need to be in class to doodle, and you don't need a canvas and expensive paint to make art. Even if it means grabbing a pen and a piece of paper, this is a great way to pass the time while expressing creativity. Material is cheap and easy to find in retail stores such as Walmart. This includes adult coloring books, colored pencils, paints, and various pens you can keep on hand for use before and after grounding. Let your imagination roam free. This act of expression allows you to draw out your frustrations, which can help you come up with new ideas for activities and calm you down to the point that you begin to feel happier. 7. Write. Writing is the same as other artistic pursuits in health benefits that come from the freedom of expression. You don't need to be a great writer or have ambition to do this. All you need is paper and a writing utensil. 4. Begin a journal by writing down what you're feeling or how your day went. This means of expression has the effect of calming you and enabling you to work through your thoughts. Write a story. If you have a concept in mind, let loose without fear of judgment. Any ideas, even those scribbled down in a journal, can lead your writing to places you never expected to go. Brainstorm and write down a list of ideas that you consider fun or things that you have always wanted to do but never done. 8. Listen to music. A first choice for many stuck in grounding, music has been shown to have such benefits as improving mood and relieving stress. The kind of music you use depends upon your own tastes, and any type of music works. If you have access to a radio or other device that plays music, make use of it. 5. Your first instinct will be to blast out the sound so loud your parents can hear. Avoid getting on their nerves and provoking an argument. Consider carefully how the music affects you. Any type of music, dependent on personal taste, can lead to good feelings, but if for example that aggressive rap song you like often leads you to feeling angry, avoid it. If you're a musician, even a beginner, play an instrument. The Act of making your own music relieves tension and gives you practice time. 9. Find a new hobby. If you've got nothing else to do, here's an opportunity to at least research an activity you'd like to try. Investigate a pursuit such as cooking and try it out to see if you find it fun. 
Not only does this fill the time during a grounding, it can be the basis for a hobby you pursue long term. If you have internet access or books on the subject, use these to collect information to figure out which hobby is right for you and how to get started. Ask your parents for help. They can get you started, even showing you the basics of your hobby if they have any experience. This is even more important for something like cooking if you need permission to touch the stove. 10. Play with your pet. Your pet is your friend and family, but life is so busy it's easy to forget to give them attention. They'll be happy to have you around and you'll be even happier playing together. 6. Use toys such as danglers for cats. You'll enjoy the way your pet reacts and gets entertainment out of such a simple activity. Get down on their level. Roll around with your dog or cat. Let your bird rest on your shoulder. Put your rodent in a rolling ball. Being close to your pet helps you relax. 11. Use your electronics. You're stuck inside, but that doesn't necessarily mean all of your electronic devices are gone. In fact, spending more time inside may mean doing the opposite of what you normally do, and for some this means getting more invested in technology. Parents may also allow you to keep devices in your room. If you have a television, channel flip to find a new movie or show, or rewatch an old favorite. If you have internet access, search for new hobbies, music, podcasts, or even participate on social media. Try a video game you have yet to find the time to play. Use your iPod, radio, or similar device to play music. Part 2. Finding Outdoor Activities Download Article 1. Walk Your Dog Like playing with your dog, walking your dog is good for you. And your dog too. Dogs are supposed to get an hour of daily exercise, but walking also allows the both of you to get outside and see your neighborhood. 7. Take a new route around the neighborhood. Go explore places you haven't yet had a chance to explore and meet new people. 2. Ride your bike. Bike riding is a great mode of transportation and exercise. It'll force you to get away from the temptation of sitting around at home and allow you to work off your frustration of being grounded, even if you're permitted to only ride up and down your street. Ride to a place you haven't been in a while or go find new sites to revisit later. Explore your surroundings. If permitted, go on a bike ride with your friends or your family. The exercise and company will help you feel better. 3. Play in the yard. You've got an old ball or a jump rope you haven't touched for years. Recall the days on the playground when you first learn it double dutch. Or organize a game of kickball. Such physical activities lead to better health, the removal of negative feelings, and can be shared with others. Grab a sibling, a friend, or a parent who isn't busy. The company you keep will increase your enjoyment and give you someone with which you can work off your frustration. Anyone involved in sports can use this time to practice. A basketball player for instance can practice shooting free throws. In winter months, transition to winter activities. Get a ball and hockey sticks. Skate around on ice. Bundle up and build a snowman. Four. Take pictures. You don't have to be a budding photographer to take pictures. 
but stepping outside and doing so allows you to practice your artistic expression while seeing the sights in your area that you usually ignore. Use a cell phone or ask your parents to borrow a camera. Even a cheap, disposable camera will do. Use your imagination when choosing subjects. It doesn't matter. If you choose to take pictures of flowers, snow formations, or your pet, this is your time, and you should choose what captures your eye. These pictures can be used later. For instance, you can put them into a photo album online or offline or make a collage. Part 3. Dealing with your parents. Download article. 1. Let your emotions subside. It's usual for you to feel upset about being grounded, but taking your anger out on a parent will make you feel more miserable. Go to a room where you can be alone. Avoid contact with your parent until you feel ready to speak to them. To calm yourself, do an activity or two first. Keeping yourself Physically and mentally occupied distracts you and you may even enjoy the activity enough to feel happier. If possible, you can also choose to talk to a friend during this time. They'll listen to your story and may even give you insight. Keep in mind that your parent may feel angry too, so give them time to recover. 2. Apologize verbally. Put yourself in your parents' position and try to understand why you've been grounded. Chances are your parents didn't want to punish you. By understanding why they did, though, you can express more sincere remorse that at the very least establishes better communication that will make you feel happier. 8. Speak your apology out loud. This is difficult to do at times, but a verbal apology carries more weight. Adopt a proper tone. Keep your voice low, clear, but authentic. Make your apology meaningful by showing you understand what you did wrong and will do differently next time. Instead of saying you're sorry for kicking a ball in the house, say, I'm sorry. I broke your lamp. I shouldn't have been kicking the ball in the ho use. Next time I'll play outside so I don't upset you by breaking the rules. 3. Ask how you can reduce the grounding. Many parents are open to making a deal. Chances are they have some household chores they haven't finished. By sparing them the effort. You ingratiate yourself because you're doing something for them, and it makes you look apologetic. The activity and the reduced grounding time will make you feel happier. 9. For example, offer to do the dishes. Your parent may exchange that work for a few days off your grounding time. Some parents are strict, or the offense you committed to serious to them to be forgiven through deals. You'll have to deal with this by waiting out the grounding. 4. Talk to your parent. Some parents are more open than others, so use your discretion as to whether or not discussion is beneficial. Those that are willing to listen will be more willing to end your grounding if they believe you. Understand what you did wrong and have learned from it or at least have a discussion with you that takes away some of your anger and sadness. 10. Discussions should always be calm, quiet, and open. As soon as you resort to anger and screaming, you cause your parent to retreat into their anger and authority. This causes them to Extend the grounding and you to feel bad all over again. Tell them your side of the story and listen to theirs. Chances are, you'll reach a middle ground, 
erasing hurt feelings and tension. In the process, strict parents may be concerned with expressing their authority. You may have no choice but to wait out the grounding.